This is the Makita six and a half inch cordless circular saw. It comes with a 16 tooth carbide tip blade and that's gonna work great on the construction site. But if you're cutting a lot of finished plywood, you'll get a nicer cut from a blade with more teeth. So the first thing I like to do is replace the blade with a 40 tooth finished plywood blade. To change the blade, first thing, take the battery out of the saw. Back on the handle here is an Allen key. Over here we have a stop. That stop will lock the blade in place and allow you to turn the nut. Then take off the washer, move the guard back and take the blade out and put the new blade in. Making sure that the blade is in the right direction and the teeth are spinning this way. You don't want to accidentally put the blade in backwards. Put the washer back and then the nut. Holding the blade lock, I'll tighten the nut. Now I can put the battery back in the saw. To start the saw, you have to push down the safety here, pushing that down, and you're ready to cut. But first, let's look at a few more things. With the new blade on, the first thing we'll do is put the Allen key back. This lever here adjusts the bottom plate. That will determine how deep your cut will be. So you basically want your blade to be maybe a quarter of an inch deeper than your material. So if you're cutting a two by four, which is an inch and a half, maybe your blade depth would be set to an inch and three quarters. And you're just gonna do that by eyeballing it. Now that we have the blade height set, let's go ahead and make a cut. If you're gonna buy a circular saw, you may as well buy a speed square. This is a very handy tool and great for making straight cuts. So let's say that we want this two by four cross cut at 26 inches. We'll put a mark at 26 inches. Take the speed square, hold the pencil on that mark, move the speed square towards the, the pencil point and square across. Next, I'll use the speed square as a guide or a fence, and I'm going to line the blade up. So basically, I'm leaving about half of that pencil line. My blade wants to be on this side of the line, and I'm just lining the teeth up with that pencil mark. The saw plate will run against the speed square, and I'll make the cut. Let's take a look at that from another angle and I'll stop halfway through the cut so you can see where the blade is and the depth of the blade. This is the blade guard. As you push the saw into the material, the guard will come back. If you are using the saw like this, drop it down on the table, the guard will prevent the blade from cutting into the table and the saw running off. Sometimes you do have to manually push the guard or open the guard to create a plunge cut and that's what we'll do next. Let's say you have to make a cut on the inside of the material so the outside isn't going to open up the guard and let the blade start cutting. This might be the case if you're cutting out for a window or something. So you'll have your window drawn out or your, your inside square. You're going to have stop points because you don't want to go beyond those stop points. And you're going to cut along the line and stop when you get to those points. And you'll end up having to finish the cut with maybe a, um, a jigsaw or something. So to make this cut, again, you're going to adjust the height of the blade because you don't want the blade to be that deep. Again, maybe just a quarter inch deeper than your material lock it in, and then you're going to have to use the guard to plunge into the material. So I'm opening the guard. The saw is tilted up and I'll get the blade going. And then slowly drop it down. So you see I dropped it down a little forward and then carefully back the saw up to that mark. 
Now I would have to finish the cut with a jigsaw or a handsaw. Right now the saw is set at a 90 degree angle, but you can also cut as much as a 50 degree angle. And to change the angle, the saw will move this lever and then adjust the base plate at the bottom. We can go all the way to 50 degrees, but since 45 is more common, let's make a 45 degree angle cut. And since this is only a six and a half inch blade, we'll need to set the blade at its deepest setting in order to cut through an inch and a half material. This is kind of an awkward cut, so I suggest taking a few practice cuts on a piece of scrap wood before you make this cut on something that you're working on. Okay, let's try that one again from another angle. Most circular saws will come with a guide that will look like this. It will slide into the base plate and I'll have to loosen this nut over here. And then I can move it into the correct position tighten the nut and lock it in place. The way I would use this guide is, let's say I want to rip three inches off of this piece of plywood. I'll measure over and make a mark at three inches. Next, I'll hold the saw with the teeth at the mark, move the guide in and lock it in place. Now I can make a rip down the full length of the sheet. Okay, well that's basically the basics of a circular saw. Really just make a few cuts, get used to the saw, and uh, the more time you spend with the saw, the more comfortable you'll become with the tool. I hope that you'll click on the link below and check out the plans bundle. I've got a lot of great projects there and free YouTube to, or free tutorials on YouTube. You can check those out. And next time I'm going to show you how to make this DIY track saw. So I almost never use this guide because instead of the guide, I use this jig. So that's next time. I hope you'll tune in for that and I'll see you then.